These are perhaps the most unusual times we're living in. Um, I don't think I need to explain to you why I'm sitting here in this uh, room on this set as opposed to standing inside the church um, as I'm sure unless you're living in some cave somewhere most people know that most the vast majority of the globe is being affected by this coronavirus. Now, I don't want to sit here this morning because we are going to have church. It's just going to be an unusual way of having church. I don't want to sit here and discuss uh, coronavirus or anything like that. We've, I've been discussing this. We've been playing festivals and programs and probably everything that you turn on from your TV, your radio, your microwave, your dog are probably all talking about coronavirus and you're probably tired and needing a break, yes? Yeah, yeah good. So um, I do wanna spend the first five minutes of the program just kind of giving you some idea of what we will be doing over the next couple of weeks um, as new terms like social distancing um, and things of that nature have necessitated. We are um, functioning in this room with Voices of Faith. Um, there will be a schedule to keep the people, the number of people who are needed coming into the building at a minimum and kind of in one place. We have people who are disinfecting. We're doing all the measures we can, but I want people out there who are tuned in to know a few things. First and foremost, the ministry has not shut down. Um, it's, it's in these days that I'm not sure some churches and some houses of worship are not equipped like we are. Um, so I'm very grateful that we have the infrastructure. Some of you who are regular participants who watch across the country and around the world are completely unaffected in how you receive the program because the program is still going 24 hours a day. You can watch on demand. Uh, the only thing that's going to change and that will be for the next few weeks until we, we kind of know what's going on. This is probably going to be the new norm for us in gathering and in me delivering the message. So I want that to be first and foremost. I don't want anybody to think uh, that I'm not here or we've gone away. Um, so that's number one. Number two is people have asked me, um, unlike businesses, and I have many, many friends who are in business, some small businesses, some large businesses, and the main thing that people are talking about is how will businesses function? How will things get back to normal? And this is what I've been telling people repeatedly. So I pray you hear what I'm saying, and I'm trying to keep this as, as brief as possible on this subject. The first place that people always decide to take back or to be a little bit more stingy is in their giving. Now, I want you to hear what I'm saying because it's very important. I teach biblical giving. I don't do fundraising. I don't do the uh, Jesus junk and uh, let me try and get you to invest in God. I don't do that. You have been taught. You know you have a responsibility. At the same time, I realize because these are unprecedented times, people will try and figure out how to do whatever they can, and that's all I'm asking you. Figure out how to take care of what you need to take care of, and that includes the things of God. I'm telling you not to neglect this or neglect that, but um, it is kind of a very typical thing people tend to think about. Is, Few people have asked me, what should I do with my business? Because a lot of these are small business owners, and their, their fear is they'll never recover. First of all, let me just say this. This is not the spirit of optimism. This is the American spirit. We will survive. We will get through this. We have been through, this country has seen many different crises, none like this. But you can be very sure of one thing. The American spirit of who we are as a people is being tested and what's, being, what's coming to the surface, I, I would like to say, or I'd like to believe, is the better side of humanity. I think it took a crisis, and it's taking a crisis with severe consequences, 
for people to get real perspective on their lives, to get back to the things that matter. You know, for 15 years, I've talked to you about people who have nothing to do with their time except go on social media, blog, be bullies, be cruel. And if you look around in our society, we have become a society of godless, clueless, indifferent, mostly mean, and un-American in our approach. I'm praying that all of this brings us to a new level, almost like bringing us to our knees, a new level of understanding. We're all in this together. I don't care what your skin color is. I don't care how much you earn or how little you earn. Some people who think they're, they'll never recover, some people who are so fearful and they're in such a grip of fear, all they can think about is, how will I survive next month? What will happen to my friends, my family, my business? All of these questions depend on one thing, and they do depend on one thing. Your spirit of faith and trusting that, first and foremost, if we could ever get back to being a God-loving country, we'd find there's a tremendous amount of comfort, and especially in these times where the Bible says God is a very present in our times of need and help. He's there. But he's not a genie in a bottle. So maybe this crisis will give us new perspective, new understanding, and a new spirit, a renewed spirit of what we can actually do as a country if we get off being greedy, self-serving, and self-absorbed, which is what we've become. Now, I didn't start this diatribe to say or to, to, to make people feel bad. I want to talk about how we will function. We're going to function just like we would in any other situation and in any other crisis. The spirit that says, people that pull together that say, we will come through. And for those people who maybe, and I'm sure we have people like this, there are people who know their neighbors and their friends and their enemies, the people who have needs, the people who are, they've taken care of themselves. It's really, this is a time for us, not only for perspective, but also to be looking at, have I only been taking care of me and my house, just like the prophet Haggai to the people, talking about while God's house was in disrepair. Now, I'm not saying God's house is in disrepair, but the spirit, the, we'll call it the spirit of God and the spirit of what we should be about. Maybe this is the time to reassess where our focus has been placed and perhaps get a new bearing on life and the important part of life which cannot be excluding God. That's the thing we've done a great job of. What else can we do? I told you last week when I sat down here, we are praying people so I don't just want to sit down here and say, hey, if you can give and talk about money, I want to talk about the thing every single person can do in the sound of my voice, whether you have or whether you don't have. We all have the capacity to pray. And I've, I've lined this up through the week, and I've been repeating this program that I recorded deliberately to say this. As I said, I'd take five minutes. I'm pushing on two extra minutes here. First and foremost, I said to you, whether you like the President of the United States, he is still the President. And I've asked you as a spiritual leader, as your fellow American, and as someone who's very concerned for the state of this country in its division, because a house divided cannot stand, a house divided cannot stand, and a country divided cannot stand, I've asked you to put aside your pettiness, your your pet ideas, the things that you think may be important, to pray for the person, whether you like the person or not, who is essentially driving the country. The unfortunate part is there are a lot of people who are sharp and quick to criticize, but I'm going to say this to you as someone who is responsible for the people who are listening to me this morning and anybody who has said, I, I, I need to get back to God. It's a very difficult position to be in when you're a leader and you need to make important and tough decisions that will affect many people. I'm an employer. I'm not just a pastor. I'm not just a spiritual leader, a community person who is deeply involved with a lot of community functions. 
but I'm also a leader who has to come to you and say, these are the tough things we have to do. We may have to cut this or we may have to cut that just to make it, even if it's temporarily. Now, take my position of, we'll call it managing a couple of hundred people in my immediate vision and maybe a couple of thousand people in directives that I'm giving spiritually. And I have the difficulty of making decisions that are in your best interest for the church, for the future of the church, and foremost, what God would desire for me to do. Our president has that on a incredibly large scale. The people who stand in this moment in crisis to criticize I would like to see, friend, how you would fare if we took you out of your comfort zone and basically threw you into a crisis and said, now you solve it for everybody and you better make the right decisions. I highly doubt under that pressure any of us could stand for 24 hours in calmness trying to give reassurance, whether it is completely true or whether it's in optimism to the American people who have been gripped with fear and panic over this pandemic. So I'm asking you as a praying people, please pray for the leadership of our country, whether you are red, blue, green, yellow, I don't care what color you think you attach or you best identify with. Please start by praying for our leaders. They are the ones making the decisions that will affect and ultimately whether they err it on the side of caution, familiar statement because I said the same thing to you. I would prefer to say somebody erred on the side of caution and many lives were spared because of that caution versus just being reckless and saying, well, let's see what happens. This is why I've taken the tactic to reduce the amount of people gathered in one place. But as I said, all of the services that we do and that we provide will continue. Um, the last thing I'm going to tell you is, if you haven't been uh, instructed to do so, please do not show up at the building unless you are scheduled here by the Voice of Faith Coordinator, as I'm trying to keep the safety of everyone here at the forefront. Now, I said what, what we do here. We're praying people. If people are still able to do their part right across the board, I'm asking you to do exactly what you've been doing. And some people have said, well, maybe I have to scale back what I'm doing. Well, then that's what you do, but you act in faith, you don't act in fear. So hopefully I've made that clear. And I do have a message prepared. So as uh, interesting as this, what we're doing here right now is, um, I, I wanna move on from this discussion and move towards getting back to the Bible and possibly touching into the series that we've been on for the last um, I think when we stop, we're at message 15 on the subject of heaven and hell. And I think there couldn't be a, a better subject right now, while people are nervous about all these things, to talk about and start maybe taking away some of the fear when people say, what if, and how do I know, and all these different questions. I'm going to come back to you in a minute with a whole bunch of questions. But right now, to kind of set the tone a little bit, here's what we're going to do. I have people here that are going to be answering phones. I am going to play uh, one song so that the folks who are listening right now, if you want to call in, and there are people listening this morning that have never watched this um, program before. They've seen the church service, but they've not seen this. I'm sitting here with my set. I've got my map over there, the Voices of Faith and the phone banks in front of me, cameras, uh, lots of different people in the room. So if you don't know what you're watching, it's just a different type of program, it's same me. Not a different me, right? Still think it's me. Um, but what I would like you to do for people that don't know why we open the phone banks, the phone banks are for people to call in a prayer request. You can call in a commitment. You can call and just say, I'm listening. And some of you who are real curious because you watch but you've never called the 800 number, you're going to get a chance right now. We're going to open up the phones for a quick song and then we come back. I'm going to teach.